please don't do this if you're preparing for a job interview and especially if you're a non-native English speaker. And especially if you're interviewing in tech or anywhere else that uses or requires the star format for behavioral interview questions. Don't script your response first and then try to study it and memorize it or remember it. The reason is, oh, I'm t I've seen this over and over again. I know you mean well and over preparation is actually better for these kinds of interviews, but when you script your response, typically, and even for native speakers, like your writing skills are usually stronger and more formal. So you're going to end up using more advanced vocabulary, maybe vocabulary that you know, but you don't use on a daily basis. Your sentence structure is going to be more complex. And then that's going to be really hard for you to remember. And what happens is because you like it so much and it does sound so much more formal in the interview, you're going to focus your energy on remembering the structure and the words instead of the message, the story, your value. And that is not going to get you the job. So what I actually recommend is I want you to record yourself and you can use the transcription like dictation or the voice to text feature on Microsoft Word or any other thing that you use, record yourself and then transcribe what you're saying. Then you can kind of organize the order, make sure it's in star format, maybe optimize a few things. But what's going to happen is your responses that you're studying are going to sound more like you. You're going to use words. Remember, you're not like you're trying to be a, a software engineer or you're trying to be the director of a department, not an English teacher. So you need to focus more on, again, the content needs to showcase you, your process, your skills, how you add value to a company, not the newest word you just learned that you really want to use because it sounds more elevated. There's a time and place for that. This is not it. <laughs> so focus on the value by using simple sentences, words that are natural to you, any word that causes you to it just triggers that self-doubt or you're not sure if you pronounce it correctly all the time, use a synonym. An interview is not the time nor the place. <laughs> so use things that are going to be an asset to you and make you look and sound more confident. Your accent is not the problem. You are the problem or more specifically your mouth. So when you are not understood and you think it's because you have a very strong accent, what's actually happening is you are there are actually like a couple things or a few. The first is notice if your mouth shape is small, if you're not moving your mouth a lot, what happens is not only are you not enunciating clearly, but your mouth in that smaller form or space is reverting back to the muscle memory of your native language. So you can't really make an effort. For example, the American R, the tongue is back, doesn't touch anything. But in that space, you're probably going to go back to, let's say if you're a Spanish speaker, where the tongue touches the top. By opening your mouth, you enunciate, you get to breathe more. A lot of you aren't breathing enough. And the other thing that might be happening is you're either or both speaking lower or speaking a lot faster. And you're doing that because a lot of times we do that because we hope people, if they don't understand us, it helps you feel better that, okay, it wasn't my English. It's because I'm speaking too fast. So I kind of do it as a self-preservation thing. And I understand, but you don't need it. An accent just makes your English more delicious, add some flavor. So I don't want you to feel self-conscious if someone asks where you're from because they notice your accent. What I want you to do is speak up so they can understand your message. I like to pretend there's someone on the other side of the door and you have to speak clearly enough and loud enough that they can understand you comfortably. This is fabulous. So whenever you're in a meeting, especially virtual, but really in any situation, try to project your voice so it reaches the person on the other side of the door. So remember, open your mouth and embrace your accent. It makes you extra beautiful. As a non-native speaker, one of the hardest things for you is probably active listening. So what I really want you to focus on when someone else is speaking or if it's an interview or something and they're asking questions, take the time to mindfully breathe. This is going to help you reduce your heart rate, feel calmer, but also like snap you back into the moment because what you often do, especially, you know, when English is not your native language, you're probably planning what you want to say. Cause you're like, oh, I want to use the right word. I want to use the right structure. But when you do that, 
Not only are you not paying attention, but your facial expression and your body language changes. Because if you're listening actively, your face is gonna reflect what the other person is saying. Whereas if you're thinking and you're worrying, your face is gonna look like this. So it's gonna be hard to keep your shoulders up. It's gonna be hard to keep your muscles relaxed and to even like know what they're saying so you can respond to. So you really wanna inhale, exhale, practice breathing and trust. Trust yourself, trust that you can respond with something. Don't worry about it being something perfect, and little by little, as you start hearing yourself be more responsive in conversations and you get the success, the dopamine hit of having that back and forth, it's just going to snowball for you. So I want you to this week, today, even if you're watching Netflix, just be mindful of how many times you hold your breath when someone else is speaking English. And a lot of, look, it comes from a good place, right? Like you do it because you think that by holding your breath subconsciously, we do it to listen better. Unfortunately, it triggers anxiety, it triggers adrenaline and cortisol, the stress hormone, and that's going to take away your ability to speak naturally and to look natural. So I want them to see you. I want you to be you. And this is something that's going to help you a lot. A lot of my clients get in interview mode. So you feel like you have to perform a certain way once the interview starts. Instead, especially at the level, like if you follow me, you're probably at a higher level in your career. Um, you want to show up to share, show up like a mentor. So if you put, instead of your interview hat, put your mentor hat, because I want you to think of all of their questions, especially the behavioral questions as opportunities to share your wisdom through stories about your experience. What I want you to do is speak up so they can understand your message. I like to pretend there's someone on the other side of the door and you have to speak clearly enough and loud enough that they can understand you comfortably. This is fabulous. So whenever you're in a meeting, especially virtual, but really in any situation, try to project your voice so it reaches the person on the other side of the door. So remember, open your mouth and embrace your accent. It makes you extra beautiful. When you're in a job interview or giving a presentation or really speaking in general, breathe. When the other person is asking the question in a job interview, for example, I want you to breathe when their mouth is moving. And before you speak, inhale through your mouth. This is for any situation. What a lot of people do is either they don't breathe or which causes a ton of anxiety. And from a language perspective, it makes it really hard for you to communicate clearly in English um, because you're have oxygen deprivation. So it's hard to focus on anything other than survival. <laughs> so what you want to do is instead of breathing through your nose, which can be loud or it can take an extra second, you want to inhale through your mouth. And I don't mean <gasps> very subtle. So if the person tells you what's your greatest strength, you're like, my greatest strength is to inhale and speak on the exhale. This might sound obvious, but I want you to observe yourself in situations like meetings or even casual conversations. Notice how often you don't breathe, how often you hold your breath. And for example, for me, I notice I hold my breath when I'm posting on social media and that I realized was causing me a lot of anxiety. So I started associating social media with anxiety. And once I started regulating my breath, it really helped me be more creative, et cetera, et cetera. So for you, you might be having trouble with English or you might think I can't, you know, get my thoughts fast enough in English. When in reality, your language is good enough. Your language skills are good enough. What you want to do is help yourself by breathing more regularly. And it's going to be a very subtle inhale and just speak on the exhale. So it's not a full speak. And my greatest strength is, and just that moment is going to remind you to also do those breathing moments or microseconds in between your responses. And that's going to help you be able to have endurance and really speak from a more personable place instead of a, what am I trying to say? What's the vocabulary? What's the word? You can focus on your experiences and sharing value. <music>